The reason why I haven't been making videos the last couple of days is because I've been playing Cult of the Lamb, like for hours. And the coolest thing about that game is that you can get painted in a hole, painted in a hole, painted in a hole, painted in a hole, painted in a hole. I'm an AHK user. You might think that I'm using Soundplay to play that sound. And yes, now I have a numpad <laughs> with some sounds on it. It might reappear in later episodes. Who knows? So, Soundplay. Let's try it out. Currently, I have it play two sounds. And let's see what happens. You only... <laughs> You only hear the vine boom sound effect. And the first sound you can't hear actually. Which means that sound play can only play one sound at a time. And that's the case even though those are separate files. Still, for some reason, sound play can only do one thing at a time. Which is very annoying. So, for that reason, um, I asked a question on the, on the hotkey discord and I got helped. Vieira wrote a class which I rewrote to be what I like a bit more. Sound player. Well, it makes me able to play multiple sounds at a time. <laughs> That's hilarious. Well, first of all, one thing to know is that only wave? Yeah, I think you say wave. Wave files are supported by this. So a bit of a limitation, but if you have FFmpeg, then it's not really a limitation. You just switch it and here you go. It's available for Windows as well. If you don't have WSL or Linux overall, well, why would you watch an HK tutorial if you're using Linux? So yeah, if you're on Windows, just install FFmpeg and convert an MP3, for example, into a WAV file. And here you go, essentially. So, this whole thing looks kind of scary, like, what? Some DLL calls and you do something? Let me just show off how to use this class first. So, essentially what you do is create an object of this class and pass uh, the path to your WAV file in the constructor. So basically in the brackets of the class. And then you call the method play to play the sound file. Pretty simple, right? But the thing is, you will likely have a hotkey for this. Meaning every time you press that hotkey, it will have to create a new object of that class. Now, practically, you'll probably never notice the difference, but still, I like to be efficient, more so with speed than with memory. So I would rather create the object once and not worry about it later. So you might think, oh, okay, so I'll just have a variable of that class instance and then use that class instance to play the file uh, through my hotkey. Right, but this is maybe okay if you only have one sound file, but you probably will have at least multiple. I think I have three for now. They will grow. So the idea of just having random global variables in the middle of your script sounds really dangerous. So maybe you have a single global variable of a map where you uh, map the names essentially of your sounds with the object um, of the sound player that can actually play that sound and then you reference mm, hold on here we go then you reference that sound through that map and here you go but still you're using a global variable for not good of a reason overall I really dislike using global variables they can lead to some surprising errors uh, so I thought of this 
or rather I want it to, and you can use that as well, the sound player, the class, has a map in it, in, well, inside of itself. A map that you can use to store your sound files, or rather your sound classes. So you can just add stuff to sound player storage, and here you go. Now you can just find the sound through calling storage and then play it. Much, much nicer because there's essentially no way that the storage static property of sound player will get overridden or maybe it will get confused with, with something else when when something like this, just a global variable for a map, can potentially bring trouble or it, it at least feels bad. And when you have a specific place to hold all of your sounds, it's quite good. So how does this actually work? Through DLL calls of these commands. The ones that we're using is open, play, and close should be yeah here it is essentially windows has these multimedia command strings which can do different stuff with multimedia i guess what a weird word i i never truly comprehended it like multiple media multiple as in different or it's kind of strange word honestly but as you can see, there are many stuff which you can use through using an abstraction that I wrote and will show you, obviously. So, the sound player. What happens? First of all, we need to make DLL calls to use any of these commands. And the DLL call will look exactly the same except for, well, the command itself. When we use play, we say we say play sound blah, 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 whatever all right and that will be just command everything else of the stir stir empty string you went what all of that will stay the same and you don't need to know what that does the first thing is we're actually sending the string which is what that's exactly what it says strings so we send strings to essentially windows to tell it hey do this command and that is a string uh hold on here here we go yeah that is a string you send a string and everything else you really don't have to worry about uh, what's cool about this is that you don't need to understand it. As far as I saw, there's no benefit in knowing. So you just specify nothing, but specify something. Doesn't matter, because now we have an abstraction called MCI send. Great, and we can use this to do this whole DLL call and pass the thing that we actually need, the command. Great, so what do we need to do for this whole class to work? we need to register sound and we are using MCI send and we use it in a couple of places this would be this DLL call it just looks nicer because we actually pass what we care about no need to repeat code you know so we need to register the sound what does that mean open we need to open the file that we passed if you remember here the path we need to open that file and then type wave audio don't worry about it basically we need this for this to work i'm pretty sure cool we opened the file but this is exactly the thing which we try to avoid by using uh, a map 
to store all of our objects instead of doing something like this where we create an object every time because we would need to register sound meaning we would need to open this file every single time when we press our hotkey that seems like a bit much to me so we instead just open the file once and then while our script is running uh, we can do stuff with that file which is already opened so no need to do that step so it's a bit more efficient once again you'll probably not notice that ever like practically effectively but as you start thinking oh i'll never notice this and start coding with that kind of man mindset you end up piling up a lot of i'll never notice this and you will eventually notice this <laughs> you know so it's better to optimize something that's very easily optimizable maybe i'm wrong though comment down below what you think so play is actually the only method that we're supposed to call from sound player the reason why uh, a lot of my methods here start with uh, double underscores is to tell you they are private you as the user that's using the class is not supposed to call them but those that don't have those double underscores yeah those you can use everything else is just for the class to work properly which you don't really need to think about i think it's beneficial for you to learn how this works but you don't need to know how it does to use this so when we play we play the this web path which we'll come back to so essentially this is the path that you specify in the constructor from zero we need from zero because otherwise say you play a sound cool the sound finished you try to play that sound again from the same hotkey and now nothing happens because the file finished and you try to play it well it's finished but if you specify from zero it would always restart okay great and what is delete delete is a meta function or a meta method technically same way the new what the new method is a meta method uh, delete is as well what does that mean essentially a meta method is something that you can write to change the default behavior of a class usually so with the new meta method we get to provide a function for when we call the class so when we construct it and delete does something else it makes sure something so everything here all the commands that you specify here make sure those are done when the object of your class is disposed of so say you have this version maybe you like simplicity and you pick this well this delete function would run after every time that you press the hotkey but if you have this in storage the delete method would run every time you exit the script reload the script or maybe somehow else remove these objects from memory so or the hotkey is garbage collected essentially what i'm saying is delete runs every time that this class or this class instance gets garbage collected this is probably a whole another explanation for a different video about classes but i've never used delete before and i wanted to explain it at least to 
a pretty good point. So after we open the file, we will eventually need to close it, right? So we do. We do close this file, but only once we know for sure we don't need it. So let's go to my sounds and ls. Let's actually open it in Explorer. Here we are. So I've already played this file, or I think this file. I don't think I need this. And if I try to delete it, it won't let me because it's open in auto hotkey because I opened that file. But if I reload my script and try to delete it, I won't, but renaming is essentially the same thing. So let's try doing that. Well, sure, I failed. <laughs> All right, but basically the idea is once the delete method is called, we close the file and now we can do anything with it. Not sure what happened just there, but that's the idea at the very least. Should work. It worked for me before. So let's look at the new method. So we have a field or a property. If you like to be incorrect, <laughs> technically, te technically, this is a field, not a property. It doesn't matter. It's literally auto hotkey, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's unset. Basically, reason why I even have this in the first place is so I will add documentation later. And at the point when you're watching this video, there will probably be documentation. And by the way, I haven't mentioned this, but obviously this code is available on GitHub. I leave a link to my GitHub profile under every video in the description. So to find this, you would go to lib-v2 system sound player. And here you go. There will be docs that explain stuff more concretely or less. We'll see. Or rather, you'll see. And I'll see too. The new method, we provide the wave path, so the full path to the file. If it's not a wave file, then what are you doing? It should be a wave file. But if if it is a wave file, then we set this field, uh, which is used in multiple places, as you can see and we register sound so we open it this is why i don't need to explicitly call register sound it's done automatically which is why you don't need to call it when you create an object this is called you don't have to worry about opening the file you just use the play method and that's literally it and yeah and here we go let's go to keys oh here we are already so yeah this is my remaps for the numpad and I have three sounds so far. <laughs> Honestly, like, even when I'm alone, say I'm watching some video or doing something, and doing some random is just so funny to me, which is the entire reason I decided to go into this and make this whole class. And uh, I hope it's useful to you too. And if it was, press a like, type some comment, maybe you have a question or suggestion. Definitely subscribe so you don't miss my content, but most importantly, stay fresh, cheese bags. And I'll see, <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. <laughs>